Hi everyone, it's time to introduce project number two, appropriation. In the visual arts, to appropriate means to properly adopt, borrow, recycle, or sample aspects or the entire form of man-made visual culture. The strategies include revision, interpretation, parody, homage, mimicry, supplementation, etc. Inherent in our understanding of appropriation is the concept that the new work recontextualizes whatever it borrows to create a new work. The argument can be made that all contemporary art employs the use of appropriation. So basically, appropriation means to borrow an element of visual culture. When you're appropriating something, the intention is to reference and to change the original meaning. In art history, the first example of appropriation is Marcel Duchamp's use of a ready-made urinal in his piece titled Fountain in 1917. Sherry Levine, a contemporary artist, appropriated Marcel Duchamp's fountain in her bronze urinal in 1991. Throughout her career, Levine has created art based on works by prominent male artists from the early 20th century in order to underscore the relative absence of women in the art world at that time. When Levine's fountain is compared with Duchamp's sculpture, it is apparent that it is not a, an exact copy. Most notably, Duchamp's piece was an actual, actual urinal, turned upside down and unaltered, except for his signature. He believed he could transform such mass-produced everyday objects into artworks merely by proclaiming them so and calling them ready-mades. In contrast, Levine's sculpture is a contemporary urinal cast in a sculptor's traditional precious metal, bronze. Polished to a brilliant shine, this piece is no longer a common store-bought item. It has been transformed by the artist into a unique object. In this slide, you see Yasumasa Morimura, who borrowed from Edward Manet. Morimura is a contemporary artist who uses appropriation to talk about identity, gender, and race. In the image above, he assumed the subject of the painting by applying liberal makeup and costume. The bar in this painting really did exist with a trapeze artist and all, but that is not the focus of this painting. The focus is the relationship between the man and the woman. It is said that because she has turned her wrist outward, she is also for sale. It is also said that the placement of her corsage also hints at the fact that she is a sexual object. In Morimura's piece, he becomes the bartender and the man propositioning the woman. Morimura transforms himself into half male and half female. In this example, you see an original drawing by Keith Haring on the left. In the center, you can see a piece by graffiti artist Banksy, who has appropriated the barking dog. And on the right, you see an appropriation of Banksy by Nick Stern, who places himself in photographs reenacting the graffiti. There is often a fine line between appropriation and plagiarism, and artists have been sued over it. On the left is a black and white photograph by artist Art Rogers. Jeff Koons found the photograph on a postcard and wanted to make a sculpture based on the photograph for an art show on the theme of banality of everyday items. And he made this sculpture on the right. Upon discovering that his picture had been copied, Rogers sued Koons and the gallery for copyright infringement. Koons admitted to having copied the image intentionally, but attempted to claim fair use by parody. The court found that an artist copying a photograph could be liable for infringement when there was no clear need to imitate the photograph. A similar thing happened in 2009 with the Hope poster made by artist Shepard Ferry that's pictured here on the right. The image on the left was originally taken in 2006 by a photographer for the Associated Press. When the Associated Press realized that the image had been borrowed, they announced that the use of the photo required their permission. Ferry subsequently filed a federal lawsuit against the Associated Press, seeking a judgment that his use of the AP photograph was protected by the fair use doctrine and so did not infringe their copyright. The case was settled outside of court. The poster made by Ferry has also been appropriated, as you can see from all of these versions that I found on Google. Images are often appropriated in the media and television. Here you see the famous Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. 
which has been appropriated for the cover of the 2004 TV series, Battlestar Galactica. And you see it again appropriated here with this zombie image that I found on Google. Likewise, the famous Nirvana album cover has been appropriated for an album cover for Weird Al Yankovic, who is a famous artist who is known for his parodies of pop music and imagery. And again, it's been parodied here on the right by The Simpsons. Sometimes it isn't just the imagery that has been appropriated, but the way something is created. Here you see an iconic woodblock print on the left, and on the right you see a woodblock print made in the Japanese tradition, but used to commemorate a Nintendo video game. And then there's Miley and cultural appropriation which has been a big conversation as of late regarding pop culture and celebrities. Cultural appropriation is the adoption of some specific elements from one culture by a different cultural group. It can include the introduction of forms of dress or personal adornment, music and art, religion, language, or social behavior. These elements, once removed from their indigenous cultural context, can, be take, can take on meaning different from those it originally held. Miley and celebrities like Gwen Stefani and Kesha have been criticized for this appropriation. In an article in Jezebel magazine, columnist Dodi Stewart said Miley and her ilk need to be reminded that the stuff they think is cool, the accoutrements that they borrow, have been birthed in an environment where people are underprivileged, undereducated, oppressed, underrepresented, disenfranchised, systematically discriminated against and struggling in a system set up to ensure that they fail. Here you see Kesha's appropriation of Native American imagery. Shortly after Miley's twerking performance at the VMAs, this series of GIFs came out. You can see the use of appropriation of Miley's performance plus the appropriation of these famous paintings. Here is Son of Man, The Scream, and Girl with a Pearl Earring. Now let's talk about what you're going to be doing for this project. The appropriation project is due in the Greenware stage on Monday, October 27th. This means it should be completed and ready to dry out. For this project, you will choose a historical ceramic vessel pre-1800, make a template of the vessel. Using the template, make two identical vessels. Choose a painting or photograph with art historical influence post-1920. And then by adopting the strategy of appropriation, you'll create a sculpture using the second vessel and elements from the 2D artwork. The 2D artwork can be anything. It can be a painting, a photograph, comic, or graffiti, as long as it has art historical importance. It cannot just be something that you or a friend has made. So for Monday, September 29th, you will need to choose a historic vessel and uplo upload an image of it to Canvas and then you will make a cardboard template. To create a template, you should draw out the silhouette of your vessel. I would recommend an 8 inch or 10 inch height, since the project should be no taller than 12 inches total. Then cut your drawing in half vertically. Next, cut the positive shape of the vessel away from the cardboard. You will be left with half of the negative shape of the vessel. Your, your cardboard should look something like this pink shape that you can see on the screen. On Monday, October 6th, you'll come to class and have uploaded five examples of appropriation, writing a short paragraph for each, explaining how it used appropriation. You'll choose five paintings or photos and write a short paragraph about why they are relevant to the art world, and you'll choose one of those paintings or photos and create five sketches of a sculpture that you'll use your vessel and the elements from the 2D artwork. We will discuss them individually in class. The requirements are as follows. Sculptures must be hand-built. Projects should not exceed 12 inches unless otherwise discussed with me. There must be a significant transformation of the second vessel. Projects should be finished. They should reflect good craftsmanship. And the surface treatment should be considered in the conceptual development of the piece. And by significant transformation, I mean that I expect the vessel to be turned into a sculptural form. It can be cut, altered, and added to. I do not just want to see the 2D artwork painted or decorated on the surface of the vessel. 
Here are some examples from previous semesters when I have assigned this project. These are two source materials chosen by a student, a vessel on the left and a painting by Dali on the right. This is the finished sculpture. You can see how the student combined the two artworks and transformed and combined the elements into a sculptural form. In this example, you can see how the student used the shape of the vessel and transformed it into a sculpture while still hinting at its original form. Here is another example. And here you see the same vessel utilized by another student. I have also done this project with one of my more advanced classes. They did not have to choose a historic vessel component, but you can see how the student was influenced by the 2D image on the left. In this example, you can see how the student took the famous image of the burning monk in protest as his inspiration. This example shows a little more of a direct translation. And in this last example, you see the transformation from 2D into 3D. I look forward to seeing all of your sketches. Please let me know if you have any questions.